If you haven't read the original Dead Bart, I recommend you listen to my rewritten, more realistic rendition of Dead Bart here, then read the original here. This analysis video is a companion piece to my rendition of Dead Bart and a critique of the original. This contains spoilers. Dead Bart is a failure as a creepypasta. It's a failure as a story as well. But unlike many lost episode creepypastas to follow in Dead Bart, Squidward Suicide, and Suicide Mouse.avi's footsteps, this story is at least an admirable failure. An interesting failure with a handful of great ideas. Salvageable ideas. The story is credited to K.I. Simpson, and I feel that if they were tasked with rewriting Dead Bart today, it'd be a much more believable and compelling story, if not for the context in which it was written. Creepypasta is, above all else, believable. That's bullet point number one when writing creepypasta. Yet because there are so many creepypastas that attempt to utilize the lost episode trope, it's basically become impossible to make a believable story out of it. It's untenable from the outset. However, because Dead Bart, in concept, is such a cool idea, I wanted to take a shot at it anyway, and ignore the context. I said to myself, I'll focus on rewriting Dead Bart as if the context was similar to when it was released, when it was still unique among creepy stories, when it was one of three stories following what is now a common trope. The prologue of my version of Dead Bart, entitled Dead Bart Redux, is the creator of The Simpsons, Matt Groening, talking about his disappointment with each new season of TV when he was a child. This is the frustration that I often feel with creepypasta in many regards, but in this case, the frustration is the selective adherence to traits of creepypasta in Dead Bart. And just as Matt Groening looked at TV shows and said, I can do better, I did the same thing with Dead Bart. The first problem the original Dead Bart runs into is rushing its plot along and telling rather than showing. We are told Matt Groening was acting, quote, nervous and morbid. We aren't told who says this. I brought James L. Brooks and Al Jean into the story as sources, and I have them describe Matt Groening's thought processes and actions during the episode's production. When David Silverman is mentioned in the old Dead Bart, he leaves a fan event prematurely, ending his presentations hours early. It is both doubtful that he'd have a presentation that would last multiple hours, few conventions have time slots that long, and that such a question would be the cause for so much drama. Furthermore, in the original, there's no reason why fans would know about the existence of the episode entitled Dead Bart. It was hidden by the episode Moaning Lisa. My version introduces a focus group screening, which starts the rumors eventually leading to questions being asked to Al Jean at a Pittsburgh Comic Con, where he confirms its existence. I take this opportunity to mention the societal impacts that The Simpsons have had. Al Jean speaking at this fan meetup, and Matt Groening being interviewed during the real-life documentary My Life Wasted, became context and explanation for why such an avant-garde episode would be made. It's important to remember how controversial and cutting-edge The Simpsons was. President George H. Bush actually commented on the show in his re-election campaign saying, We are going to keep trying to strengthen the American family. To make American families a lot more like the Waltons. And a lot less like The Simpsons. Remember, dear listeners, Philistines will always exist. But I digress. I wanted to push away from the fictionalized version of The Simpsons production team established in the original story, and in its place, describe the actual atmosphere, to describe the real motives behind the writing team, but to take those motives, which are first and foremost, inject realism into bland sitcoms, to its logical extreme, 
using the original Dead Bart as inspiration. But I had to somehow get a copy of the episode Dead Bart into my narrator's hands. The original Dead Bart has Matt Groening giving the narrator a link to a website that puts a virus on his computer, as well as a copy of Dead Bart. Why would Matt have such a link set up for this purpose? Why would it have a virus? Why wouldn't the narrator release this episode to the public? These are all questions you don't have to ask, because I wrote this part out of my version. There's no attention to detail or realism in the original version of this part. It's the biggest flaw in the original story. But when trying to come up with a reason as to why my narrator got to see it, I had a simple solution. The Fox News Mole. Joe Muto leaked information from Fox News while working there. He had both motive to steal from Fox and the ability to do it as well. Of course, I then set the scene inside the party, where Joe Muto and company watched Dead Bart. Now rather than rush the atmosphere of the episode, I let it build from uncomfortable to creepy and strange. It starts with Homer being mad, which is an established character trait for him. The lack of production quality is a hallmark of lost episode creepypastas, and it's one I'm a fan of, as it's only slightly off-putting. It just tickles the part of the brain that tells you something isn't right. It's subtle. The lack of jokes is believable for a cut episode, but unpleasant all the same. It becomes clear the domestic violence and abuse aren't being handled in a fun-loving, disarming way, like it's typical, but rather it's real domestic abuse. And just like society does, Ned Flanders turns a blind eye to it. In a similar fashion, Lisa has left home before in The Simpsons, but now it's hinted at with her sitting on her bed with a luggage bag while glancing out the window as Homer has his tirade downstairs. But now Lisa's running away is handled realistically. Running away from home isn't funny in real life. This adds no jokes and recycles audio with minimal animation. That's unsettling if I do say so myself. Now when Bart dies from being dropped out of an airplane in this version, the added context of Bart's inspiration adds to the plot point. This is what would happen if Eddie Haskell was real. The powerful image from the original version of Dead Bart, with the family sitting around a kitchen table crying, remained in my version. Again, with them remaining in place for a whole year. Unrealistic in the context of the actual cartoon? Sure. But horrifying. Impossible in the world of animation. The original version mentions that there's allegedly summaries of the episode hanging around out there. But how or why the narrator has them is unexplained. I take this part out, believe the part about Homer moving his mouth without audibly saying anything. This is again unsettling and possible, as the episode wasn't entirely finished. The reason this story remains popular is the stinger ending, that most of the guests' death dates are on the same day, hinting at an apocalyptic event, wiping out humanity. Even mentioning this end gives me cold chills, despite the massive problems with the story. Joe Muto destroys the tape, preventing the spread of the video itself, and the concept that everyone might die at the same time is framed as possibly being a joke. But as the narrator in my version mentions, it doesn't feel like one. If you have something to contribute, please leave a comment. And if you would like more content like this, here's a video link where Slime Beast, David King of Midnight Marinera, and myself discuss and read the original Dead Bart.